I have some results from a simple experiment and I just want to calculate a parameter and it ought to be very easy. I think you're going to be surprised at the number of different answers you can potentially get according to how you do the calculation. So let's take a look. The first method of calculation is just to recognize that the resistance is the ratio of the voltage to the current. So I can simply create a ratio column. So that's my resistance. And let's just give this a sensible format and put this to two decimal places. So those are my estimates for the resistance. And I can maybe just then do a distribution of those. So my resistance is the 1.9687 figure that we have for the mean. And the standard error of the mean is my standard error for that estimate. Let me document that. I'm just going to use a script window as a simple text editor. So one point, um, I need to quote this. If I look at the standard error, it's 0 0.07. So we work into two decimal places. I'm going to quote the, the resistance to two decimal places. So 1.97 plus or minus. Uh, the standard error of 0 0.07. So that's my final answer. However, I could think about different ways of calculating it. In fact, my approach to this wouldn't be to calculate this as a ratio. It would be to say that I have a linear relationship between voltage and current, and the resistance is the constant of proportionality. So what I want to do is to build a regression model of voltage versus current, and the slope is going to be the resistance. So now my resistance is 2.106, and it has a standard error of 0 0.07 again. So let me document that. So now you see the problem. I've got two different answers to the calculation for the resistance. The second method is the, sec is the method I would use. Uh, whenever I run a workshop, most people choose the first method. So there's quite a big distinction. Do we only have two answers? Is there other methods that we can use? Well, there is another method and it is based on least squares regression again, but it's based on understanding the methodology that was used to undertake the experiments. And in particular, it's most likely that what we do is we control the voltage and we measure the current. And in least squares regression, the thing that we control should be the X variable and the thing that we measure should be the Y variable. So now let's just invert this regression by putting the current as the y and the voltage as the x. And I'm going to fit a line through these. Um, <laughs> I didn't want to fit a, a horizontal line. Um, I must have fitted a mean. Uh, let's delete these. And uh, <laughs> let's fit a line that we want to have like so. Okay, now uh, what do we have here? This is going to be a bit more tricky. I'm going to just take these parameter estimates and make them into a data table so I can reference the numbers. Because what do I have? The, well, the this number here, the 0.47, that's the, just to be clear, that is the slope of the line. So it's the inverse of that is the number that we want. So I'm just going to copy that value. And I can take my script actually. So the third method is to uh, use a uh, inverted linear relationship. And let's just do the calculation then. So I've got one divided by this number. And if I show the embedded log on here, I can just run that and evaluate it. So that number is 2.12. So what are we saying? Now I've got R is equal to 2.12. 
and then plus or minus the standard error. So now I need the standard error for this estimate. Now jump's not going to help me directly. It gives me the standard error for the inverted value. So I have to think about propagation of errors and how errors propagate through an equation. And um, if my maths is correct, and based on what I read in a, an old textbook that I have, then I need to take the square of this inverted value and then multiply by this standard error. So let's look at this number, see what it looks like. And it's 0 0.07, so that's reassuring. It's the same order of magnitude as, as the other estimates. So I'm happy with that, 0 0.07. Okay, so now what do we have? You can see we've got three different estimates for resistance. So this is what is uh, sort of indicated in the, the uh, introduction to this video is that it's a simple calculation, but just because it's simple doesn't mean to say it's easy <laughs> and you have to think about which method to, to use. There are other methods of calculation. I think we're only going to see these three distinct results, but it'll be interesting maybe just to show you a couple of other methods of calculation. So the first would be to say, well, let's come back to Ohm's law and say, well, the, res the relationship is a linear relationship between voltage and current. So if I fit this line again, then this is the equation of the line, but Ohm's law doesn't have this uh, constant term at the beginning. So we could take the approach of saying, well, let's model V equals IR, in which case we don't want this intercept. And to do that, I can remove the original line. I can do a special fit. And what I'm going to say is that I'm going to constrain the intercept to zero. Uh, there's another way of saying we don't have an intercept in the model. And now I've got a model of V equals IR. And um, resistance now is 2.03 okay so we do have a, we do have another answer i might come back i was expecting to see this answer to be honest i might have to go back and just make sure that number was correct but i can't see why it's wrong so let's just model uh, v equals ir and from that we have zero point uh, sorry two points zero three so that's a bit of a surprise. I wasn't quite expecting that, but there we go. Let's put the plus or minus for the standard error. And okay, interesting. So that standard error is much smaller, isn't it? 0 0.03. Let's now do a alternative. Well, <laughs> we could still apply the inverse relationship. Should we do that? Well, maybe why not since, uh, since we've gone this far. So we're going to say that I is equal to V divided by R as a, as a linear, as a linear relationship, not just as a ratio. So what I'm going to do is to fit current versus voltage. As a, special fits constrained so it doesn't have an intercept again i'm going to have to just take my parameter estimates make those into a table so i can easily this makes it easier for me to copy and paste them so the estimate is this 0.49 so i've got uh, one divided by that is 2.03 okay so uh, r is equal to 2.03 and uh, plus or minus so this looks like it is agreeing with this one uh, you'll probably find that to uh, three or four decimal places the numbers are still slightly different uh, let's just do the standard error calculation it should be the square of that number multiplied by this standard error And that is point oh, mm, I'm not totally convinced about that number. That looks rather small. This calculation, oh, did I do the square on that? Did I have a square in there? Um, let's just double check that. 
Okay, point zero. I didn't have. I, I think I missed out the square. That looks better, doesn't it? Point zero three. Okay. And um, so that's a couple of other methods. And let's do one final method, which is I'll call it gradient descent because it is going to be gradient descent. If you learn regression on a machine learning course, you won't learn it in terms of least squares regression calculation, which is based on um, linear algebra. It's we, they, you learn it as a gradient descent method. It has the advantage is that we can use it for nonlinear regression. So even if you have a nonlinear relationship, it's a very powerful method. It's a bit overkill for this relationship, but I think it's interesting just to understand how it works. I'm going to define a resistance. Let me just call it R. And this is going to be a formula column. In fact, no, I'm going to uh, just call this V actually. I'm going to model V and I'm going to come to a formula column and let's just I think just put a new new formula in here and the formula represents the scientific equation that we have which is current times resistance now I don't have a resistance but I can actually define a parameter uh, which I can call uh, resistance or we'll just call R and I'm going to initialize it order of magnitude just say one okay so I can now have current times my parameter r and r is the thing I want to estimate okay so I've got numbers in here this is the voltage if we had a resistance of one which was my initial value of the uh, the parameter estimate for the resistance then based on v equals ir this should be the voltage now clearly these numbers don't match these numbers because I'm using the wrong value of r so now what I want to do is optimize the value of r get the best estimate for r using a gradient descent algorithm which we do by going to specialized modeling and choosing nonlinear. my response is the voltage these are the y data and my prediction formula for the voltage is v that takes me into the nonlinear regression here's my slope based on a resistance of one in fact, I can just use the slider and say, if I adjust this to different values, then we will get different uh, numbers coming in here. So now let's actually use the algorithm to come up with the best estimate here. And I could click go, and there's my estimate. So my estimate is, uh, if I can find the number, 2.0297. And I should have a standard error for that, which is two points, uh, sorry, uh, 0 0.03. So it's 2.03 plus or minus 0 0.03. Let's just close some of those so I can have that information there and write it down. So it's 2.0297, but two decimal places, it's 2.03 plus or minus 0 0.03. So that's it. Those are the uh, estimates I have <laughs> for resistance. Uh, the purpose of this video was to show you different ways of doing the calculation and how, uh, maybe surprisingly, they don't all end up as the same number. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.